Well, hello everybody. Welcome back to the Bison Workshop. I'm Bob. And I'm sitting here watching a deer. Let me show you what I'm watching. I'm watching six deer in my backyard uh, trying to knock my feeder down I just put up for the birds so they can get the seeds and eat the seeds. And I knew that was going to be an issue, but uh, I'm going to keep an eye on them tonight. And I've done run them out of there once. So uh, they're hectic on my uh, bird feeder. I had a metal one up that I didn't really care about. And they couldn't really do a lot of messing up, but... Uh, it kept getting wet in the bottom and the seed would stop coming down the bottom and then the birds couldn't get it no more because it got hard as a rock so <laughs> anyway i'm shooing deer so if i get up and open that sliding glass door and shoe somebody you, you'll know why because they're up there trying to put their feet up there and knock the bottom off of my damn feeder i done that did it twice i'm I'm surprised that uh, they haven't broke it. Maybe this will be the time. It goes in threes, right? Anyway, uh, yes, we're having Trump coffee. It just happens to be in the other room at the moment. Uh, hope you guys are having yours. I think I've had enough today. But anyway, um, I wanted to show uh, what Bison's been doing for the last couple of days. And I decided to try my hand at a suppressor or moderator or LCD, whatever the hell you want to call it, for the 45 and the 50 cal new Challenger. So here is what I came up with. And this thing weighs... I don't forgot what it weighs. Hold on, I'll go look. It weighs 4.6 ounces. And we named it Bison Big Dog. And it's just straightforward. And what this has is, uh, well, let's measure the width. Yeah, I'm watching y'all. Uh, 36.55 millimeters wide. And, um, it is 170 millimeters, roughly, um, six and three quarters of an inch long so it's about the same width or length as my poof daddy uh anyway so i have changed the design on this on the inside we're going to try something different uh, yeah i'm not going to disclose disclose what i've done uh that's for me to know and you not to find out. <laughs> but anyway, on the side here, we have vent holes. Right there, right there, and right there. And there's six of them in a circle in each location. And each one of those lines up with a channel inside here. And we're going to try something different and see how this works. Now, I'll probably do a review on this uh, because I want to test it out on the 45 caliber. And wouldn't you know, I'd forget to turn my microwave off. <laughs> so now, let's do the smoke test. And I'll tell you what, it, what that means. <laughs> I come up with that, all right? Yeah, I smoke. But I wanted to show you what, how the air will be moving through this. And this is just a test to see how it's gonna work. But 
let's uh, close this end off find something flat and close it off with he said rubber worked just fine so watch what happens did you see that did it have enough smoke Hey, like that. So now let's do it without the end on it. Hot box and a cigarette. In the name of science, guys. So, that's pretty quiet. Let me give you an example. So we've got the silent storm, which is basically the same thing as the SPD, just a little different. Uh, then we've got the uh, Widowmaker, and then we've got the Big Dog. So, that's even louder. Do I have it backwards? Nope. That's loud. Now let's do this one. Either way. That that way's quieter. Yeah, I like that man. That, I think that's gonna make a nice suppressor, guys. I think it's gonna be a nice one. But what I had to do was take the words and move them. This is the inlet. So I've already changed that. And the next time I print it, these words will be on this side. Because down here, it's thicker. It's heavier. Uh, so I can thread that an inch if I want to. So this side's only got like a half inch. Maybe even 10... 15 millimeters, something like that, thick. So, it's pretty hefty. Um, it's basically a solid frickin' uh, suppressor. It printed really nice down through it. I don't know if you guys can see that. Let me put a piece of paper behind it and move it around until you guys see light. I probably ain't hit the angle yet. If you find it, pause it. <laughs> but there wasn't, I didn't see any uh, stringing. So this actually printed really nice. Look for this to come up. I'm waiting on a tap and die and I have to also adjust the print. Uh, I actually put Bison Big Dog on the wrong end. So... Uh, I have to thread this end because it's longer uh, and the directions of the veins is direct the direction that I want them to go in so this one's going to be reading on the front so you'd almost have to hope that it lines up to where when it screws down or as tight as you want it and the words are right here so uh you can clock these with a uh a um thumb wheel that you can make to make a uh lockdown so you can lock that in any position you want but um i'm waiting on a tap for this so um i made them like this because they're straight I can put them in the lathe and I can drill these out and it would definitely be centered because the jaws are in an equal uh, around itself. So, uh, but anyway, we're waiting on a uh, tap and die for this. Then I made... Put that off on safety. 
anyway, uh, I made this barrel break that is the same diameter as this uh, shroud on the Air Venturi Avenger 25 cal. And I've got the Donny FL adapter with uh, half 20 threads. And this thing's about five millimeters thick. And this can work up to uh, 25 cal, maybe 30 cal if you've got a half 20 thread, but I just don't see how that could be possible because your threads would be so thin that the blast could break the, uh, the aluminum. So I would imagine 30 cal and above is, uh, bigger threads. I know it is on both my challengers. Uh, they're 14 th uh, threads. So I make these and I'm going to put them up for sale also. And um, this will fit any gun with a half 20 thread. And let's get us a measurement here of what size it is. We're looking at uh, 25 millimeters. So uh, 25 millimeters round. And let's see about how long it is. 55, 56 millimeters long. So we got that. So now, let's show another project that I'm working on, and this is just an experiment. Uh, what, I, what I have done here is, let me set this up. And pan you down here so you can see what I'm doing. This is going to be a little awkward for me, simply because... I'm in an awkward position. So now what I've done is printed some plates and I have to do some adjustments. Uh, this one's supposed to be for right there. And I may just leave that just the way it is with the holes there because what I did, I used this template to um, create this plate to go on the side of my gauntlet too. And uh, I can see I've got things out of adjustments because see where the hole is? I need that thing to be right there. Uh, how did I do that? All right, you can see how why 3D printing is a task because sometimes you mess up, and I did. I messed up big time on this side. I'm going to have to readjust this one. But I need to move this hole over to where this is at. So I'm, how I got measurements wrong, I did that on the other one too. Because so at first, I started off making these. And... When I got to this side over here, uh, look what I did. <laughs> I was thinking about using this. This is that rubber membrane that you put on camper roofs. And it's pretty hefty stuff. And then I just glued camouflage to it. And I was going to glue this in place right there and give this a camouflage look. But then... I cut that wrong, and I probably would have went with this camouflage, and I decided to go ahead and do the plates, but I had a hard time getting them to print. So, as you can see, where you can run into problems where you're either not paying attention, I, I needed to remove these two holes because there's no set screw on this side, but there are on the other side for the cheek rest. 
and then I gotta remove this hole and move it over here. So we gotta get some real exact measurements now. So anyway, I gotta reprint that one. And then this side uh, fits wrong too because these holes need to be up higher. What I did, I measured 10 millimeters from edge to edge and it put center wrong. So I need to move these centers up to 10 millimeters, not the edge of the hole. So that's where I made my mistake. So these have to be re redone and reprinted. So that's that. So let's put this bad boy back up. This is my gauntlet. Matter of fact, y'all haven't really seen this gauntlet too, have you? Let me uh, show you what we got going on. This is my gauntlet. I put the Picatinny rail support on it. I don't like them because they're plastic. I'd rather have a metal one. And as you can see, it flexes a lot. This plastic is flexing. So... What I need to do is put a plate inside there, maybe. I don't know. We're going to try to stiffen that up a little bit better. Uh, but I don't like that. Uh, eventually, that plastic will break from bending it so much. So that's really not a good idea. I'm hoping there's enough room in there to get one, a plate, and sandwich it together with... Uh, nuts but i don't think that's going to happen because there's not enough room in there to really do anything so might have to live with that then i got my green light and then i got my pellet clip or magazine holder so when i'm here cocking it i can just reach up there slide that out take this one out put it in there put this one back in there and i'm getting pretty damn quick at it <laughs> and there are press fit in there so you have to actually push them in pretty decent to get them to uh fit in there tight but not so tight that you can't just push that and be done with it so that's an add-on and um then we got this great old big frickin' scope. <laughs> uh, ADE scope that I got in a trade or a deal or something with M&B. So I got this bad boy. I wish I had the shades for it because I'm telling you, that's going to be a sharp looking gun. Especially if I put these plates on there and sand those to where they, they look like that on the uh, uh, barrel brake so it gives it that warm look so as you can see the holes are a little well you can't because there ain't no light I need better lighting in here <laughs> but anyway let me put you back on the tripod here and uh, show you my other products all right, so now that we've got the gauntlet put back away, uh, don't forget to get your file handles, guys. Got to have a file handle. I got some nice ones sitting here. Four of them, in fact. Ready for you. <laughs> all right, for all the guys that watch me that have 3D printers and know how convenient this next product is, is a thumb wheel for your extruder so that you can actually turn it to feed the uh, filament instead of having to push the thing uh, to push it in there it's it's nicer to have the hand wheel for taking it off and or taking the filament out and putting filament in well I could never find one that that I 3D printed from Thingiverse that actually fit. You couldn't drive them on with a hammer, and if you did, you'd ruin your motor. So I had to make my own. So what I did 
is I put a wide spot right here on this part here, as you can see. And I also drilled it for a set screw. So I got a set screw in there also. So this one here is exactly the size it needs to be, five millimeters with a quarter round cut out of it to make the flat spot. And uh, so now I've got these that I may be offering for sale. So this is how you will get it if I do sell them. Uh, these are really nice knobs. So, um, we're working on a suppressor, so look forward to the big dog. And I've got another surprise coming up. Uh, I'm going to make something that's not some, meant for one thing, and we're going to make it meant for something else. So, that's all the hint you're getting. <laughs> I will say that it's black. That's every damn part I have. <laughs> but anyway, um, let me know if you're interested in the uh, big dog. Uh, just keep your eyes open and uh, see how that works because it looks like I'm going to have Challenger for a while. Uh, so I'm getting a 357 Challenger so I can make parts for it. So uh, look for that. Uh, should have been shipped out today. I think it was, but uh, we don't know. <laughs> um, so that's what we have. And that's what we've been doing. Making uh, knobs for the 3D printers and the suppressor and the gauntlet 2 plates, which greatly need adjusted. And the barrel brake for the Avenger. Well, any gun, for that matter. Um, I have to stress that my suppressors are for air rifle use only. Nothing else. Air rifle use only. If you use it for anything other than an air rifle, it's on you, dude. Or do that. Anyway. Let me show you that real quick. The holes in that are slanted. And they're slanted backwards because this is where the barrel would go in. So we're going to see how that works. Uh, I like it. I think it made my Avenger look sexy as hell. I mean, anything looks good on that Avenger. Let me show you that. This is going to be turning into a what's Bob thinking about <laughs> video. But look, I mean, check it out. You got that? That looks sexy as hell. Let me get out of the way so you can see the whole gun. That is sexy. All right. So now, let's take one of my Silent Storms and put on here and see what that looks like. And this thing even looks sexy on that. Look at how sexy that looks. So then, we got my beaming. Uh, Chief. 22 caliber. And I'm going to do some work on this stock. I don't know what I'm going to do yet. But uh, I'm thinking of hydro dipping. I don't know. Um. 
it don't feel bad. I might just leave it the way it is. Um, the stock needs to be broke up a little bit. So I don't know what I'm going to do. There is some shiny parts that can be camouflaged, which means I would have to mask everything that I didn't want to hydro dip and hydro dip that shiny part. Uh, and leave the checkering and the stippling alone. I think that would look pretty decent. But I'm not very good at that hydro dipping. But I made this adapter to go on here because I hated that uh, QE. That's what it was on. And that thing you couldn't even take it off. I like one I can take my suppressor on and off. And I just threaded it for half 20. Just like that. So it slides on the barrel. I just cut the original threads off of it. It slides on the barrel. It's got a set screw in the top that's nicely shaped. It's right level with the top, so it doesn't look bad. And it's a uh, pretty decent job. Um, I haven't really done a lot of shooting with this one. Uh, this was the original reason I got this gun was because I was going to try to turn it into a pistol. But I like it so well that I decided that I'd rather have it as a rifle instead of a pistol. Because if I would have made it into a pistol, all this up here would have been cut off. Something like that right there. However long the pistol will be, that's how long the air tube will be. So, you want to get as much air as you can possibly get, so the bigger the tube, but you got to sacrifice weight. <laughs> Let's see, I think that's pretty much it. Um, so, I hope everybody's getting ready for their hunt. Uh, so then... I did that. Uh, these here are the cattleman cases. And I ended up with two of them for nothing. <laughs> and uh, they make pretty nice gun cases for the Diana Storm Rider because it's a perfect fit for it. So, um, I decided to, I like to know which side is up and which side is down. Because I can't stand opening my box upside down. <laughs> so, I figured I would get these. And I traded uh, my buddy, Tim, something for it. And, oh, I did some, uh, I sealed his tank for him on his, uh, cattleman. And he gave me this for doing that. So, every time I opened this daggone thing, both sides looked identical. Nothing saying up, down, whatever. So now I always know which is up. Because if I see the logo, I know that, that's the way it's supposed to be. The only thing I don't like about this case is these things slide way too easy. And I'm going to try to fix that. Uh, I'm thinking about making some kind of a spring washer or a spring to go inside there that folds up on each side to keep pressure on that so that it stays a little tighter. Uh, because these things can move really easy. See? Just depends on how it moves. It done it that one time, but uh see watch. See? This just gets bumped. They come loose. Now you can stop that by putting a um 
a pin in here to keep it from moving. And who knows, we might come up with something like that. I don't know, maybe a C, C clip or something. Who knows what we can use. But all four of them doesn't have it, so all four of them would have to be, these two would have to be drilled and just make a matching four set of pins that you have to worry about losing. <laughs> so, anyway. Hope you guys enjoyed this little hangout uh, and parts updates and what Bison's doing. This is pretty much a little bit of everything. Anyway, don't forget to like, share, comment, uh, subscribe. <laughs> you guys have a good one. Later.